The Davos Conspiracy, Exposing the Dark Side of Global Power by Wilson Media LLC 2023 Chronological Timeline Prologue, Alison Jones attends the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland Chapter 1, Alison Jones arrives at the World Economic Forum and meets Michael Chapter 2, Michael is found dead in his hotel room Chapter 3, Alison begins her investigation into Michael's death Chapter 4, Allison finds a notebook belonging to Michael with cryptic notes and symbols. Chapter 5, Allison's investigation leads her to members of the World Economic Forum who are trying to cover up Michael's death. Chapter 6, Allison is threatened by one of the members of the forum. Chapter 7, Allison uses her strategic thinking skills to come up with a plan to continue her investigation. Chapter 8, one of Allison's closest colleagues betrays her. Chapter 9, Allison narrowly escapes an attempt on her life and goes on the run with Detective Thomas. Chapter 10, Allison discovers the true agenda of the World Economic Forum. Chapter 11, Allison and Detective Thomas confront the members of the forum and reveal their plot to the world. Chapter 12, The Aftermath of the Confrontation. Epilogue, Allison Jones reflects on her experience and the impact of her investigation on the world. Prologue. Alison Jones was a determined and focused woman. She was a superb investigative journalist who devoted her life to shedding light on the shadowy areas of society and bringing to light any instances of wrongdoing that she found. She had no earthly idea what she was getting herself into when she showed up at the World Economic Forum in Davos, which was held in Switzerland. Alison's interest in the forum was piqued when she heard whispers of clandestine gatherings and backroom negotiations. She was sure that something nefarious was going on behind the scenes, and she was resolved to find out the truth about it. However, what she discovered was significantly more perilous than anything she could have possibly anticipated. She went deeper and deeper into the inner workings of the forum, and as a result, she uncovered a web of corruption and dishonesty that reached all the way to the very top. Allison's inquiry had led her to the notice of some of the most affluent, powerful and influential people in the world. These were the types of people who would do anything to keep their secrets safe. And as she probed deeper, she became aware that she was putting her own life in jeopardy. However, Allison was not the type of person to back down from a challenge. She was well versed in the art of strategic thinking and coupled with her dogged resolve, she set out on a mission to discredit the World Economic Forum WEF, regardless of the consequences. What ensued was an exciting and perilous voyage that would irrevocably alter Allison's life and the path that she would take from that point on. It was a difficult conflict between good and evil, a struggle for justice in a world in which power and wealth all too frequently trampled on the rights of the many. This is the story of Allison Jones and the fight that would turn out to be the defining moment of her life. It is a tale of brazen boldness, dog perseverance, and an unyielding dedication to the truth at all times, regardless of the personal cost. Chapter 1, Davos, Switzerland In front of the Davos Congress Center, Alison Jones disembarked from her chauffeured limousine onto the snow-covered paving outside the building. She rubbed her gloved hands together to warm them up as the brisk air caused her skin to tingle and tickle. She was in town for the World Economic Forum, an event held once a year that brings together the most powerful figures in the world in the fields of commerce, politics, and academics. She observed a man standing at the entrance with a slight smirk on his face as he watched the throng as she made her way towards the front of the building. He had a towering stature, broad shoulders, and piercing blue eyes that appeared to sparkle when exposed to the light. The brown hair he wore was nicely combed, and he wore a tailored suit that fit closely to his body in all of the correct areas. Allison felt a flutter in her gut as soon as the two of them locked eyes. She was never one to subscribe to the theory of love at first sight, but there was something about this man that compelled her to want to know more. She approached him while maintaining an air of indifference as she went. In the hopes of initiating a discussion, she politely inquired, Excuse me, but do you know where the registration desk is? The man shifted his attention towards her and smiled at her, which caused her heart to race for a while. Sure, I can demonstrate it to you. Just so you know, my name is Michael. Allison, she retorted, putting out her hand for a handshake. Michael grasped her hand in his and gave it a light shake before releasing it. Allison couldn't help but sneak a few glances in Michael's direction as they made their way towards the registration desk. She couldn't quite put her finger on what it was that made him so mysterious, but there was definitely something there. 
However, this piqued her interest, and she wished to acquire further information. She attempted to strike up a discussion with him by inquiring, So, what brings you to Davos? Michael retorted, I'm a journalist, as his response. I'm here to cover the forum, but I'm also hoping to uncover some of the secrets that these powerful people are hiding, I said. Although I'm here to cover the forum, I'm also hoping to uncover some of these secrets. Allison arched her brow in confusion. Secrets? What sorts of secrets are they? Michael smiled in a way that suggested mystery. These are the kinds of secrets that have the potential to alter the planet. However, enough about myself, tell me about yourself. What is it that draws someone in your position to Davos? Allison smiled. Of course, I'm going to be networking while I'm here, but also to keep up with the most recent developments in technology, which are ultimately influencing the direction our sector will take in the future. They continued their conversation as they made their way through the masses, and Michael nodded in agreement. Allison sensed a connection with Michael that she had never experienced before, and she knew that this was going to be a week that she would never forget even if it was the last week of her life. The murder is covered in Chapter 2. When Allison Jones opened her eyes, there was a knock on the door of her luxury hotel room. She glanced at her watch and saw that it was already 8 in the morning, she was scheduled to meet Michael for breakfast in 30 minutes. She hurriedly got dressed and opened the door, anticipating that Michael would be standing there with a smile on his face. Instead, she was confronted by two law enforcement officers who wore solemn expressions on their faces. One of the officers approached Mrs. Jones and said, Michael, we are sorry to inform you that this morning it was discovered that Michael was found dead in his hotel room. The news caused Allison's heart to sink. What? How? Is there some sort of misunderstanding here? Officers informed Michael's family that his body had been discovered by hotel employees, and that it appeared that he had been murdered before his death. Despite the fact that they did not have any suspects at the time, they continued to investigate the site. Allison was overcome with a sense of shock and astonishment as soon as she heard the news. Michael, the new acquaintance with whom she instantly felt a bond, was no longer in her life in any capacity. She couldn't believe that this was actually taking place in front of her. Allison's feelings of depression eventually gave way to fury as the day drew on. She was adamant about uncovering the truth about Michael's murder, including who was responsible and why. She was unable to stomach the idea of his murderer walking free after what they had done. She went through the day at the forum, but her thoughts were elsewhere the whole time. She was having trouble focusing on the debates and conversations, so instead, she found herself looking around the crowd for any indications of strange activity. Allison received a phone call from Detective Thomas, who was in charge of the investigation into Michael's murder. The call came just as the sun was beginning to set. Ms. Jones, we've come across some fresh evidence that we believe could be important to the investigation. Could you please come to the station so that we can talk to you? After Allison's agreement, she proceeded to the local police station to report the incident. She was escorted into a tight room where Detective Thomas was waiting for her. The office was very small. Ms. Jones, as we've been looking into Michael's past, we've discovered that it appears he was working on a piece that may have put him in danger. It's possible that this is why he disappeared. We believe that he may have been murdered by a third party in order to prevent him from disclosing it. The thoughts in Allison's head raced. What kind of news could possibly have been so vital that someone would resort to murder to keep it a secret? And how exactly was she going to identify the person who was to blame? She told Detective Thomas, I want to help, and he listened. I am willing to assist you in any way that you require. The detective gave a small nod. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Ms. Jones. We're going to need all the divine assistance we can get with this one. The investigation gets underway in Chapter 3. The following few days were spent by Allison conducting research into Michael's death. She began by conducting interviews with his co-workers and friends in an effort to piece together any clues that would lead her to the person who had murdered him. One name that kept popping up was that of Klaus Schwab, the elitist who established and serves as executive chairman of the World Economic Forum, which operates in plain sight. Michael's investigation into shady deals involving Schwab and some of his cronies had put him in a potentially precarious position, as his inquiries had led him to focus on the wrong people. If Allison was going to make any headway in the case, she was well aware that she needed to get more information about Schwab and the people he was connected to. 
She spent a lot of time looking through news articles and bank data, hoping to uncover some indication that something was done wrong. As she proceeded with her investigation, she gradually became aware of the extent to which the corruption extended. Schwab and his accomplices have been involved in a wide variety of illicit acts, including political influence, money laundering, and insider trading. Allison was well aware that she was walking into a potentially hazardous situation. She discovered that the individuals she was looking into were influential, well-connected, and vicious. However, she was unable to give up, especially not when Michael's murderer was still at large. She put in a lot of time and effort, spending a lot of hours going through records and conducting interviews, trying to solve the mystery of how Michael died. She even placed herself in danger on a few occasions by pursuing leads that took her into some pretty sketchy neighborhoods. She did this because she was determined to find the truth. Allison slowly came to the realization that she was making advancements as the days went into weeks and months. She had unearthed several significant pieces of evidence that pointed the finger of blame at Schwab and his associates for Michael's death. However, she was well aware that it would be impossible for her to take on the World Economic Forum on her own. She was in need of assistance, and she knew exactly where to find it. The first suspect is revealed in Chapter 4. Allison had been looking for leads in Michael's hotel room when she discovered a notebook hidden away in a drawer during the course of her investigation. At first sight, it actually appeared to be a regular diary that was full of notes, thoughts, and ideas. Allison, however, became suspicious when she began to leaf through the book because she detected something odd. There were cryptic notes and thoughts that were only partially developed, as well as symbols and codes that were dispersed across the pages. Allison's interest was piqued at the proposition. She was aware that Michael had been looking into a significant matter, and she had the impression that this notebook contained the information necessary to solve the riddle. She invested a lot of time and effort into poring over the pages in an attempt to grasp the meaning of the symbols and the codes. As she continued to work, she started piecing together a picture of what Michael had been uncovering, which was an extensive network of corruption and greed that reached much beyond the World Economic Forum. Allison eventually came to the conclusion that the notebook included more than simply a collection of notes as she dug deeper into its contents. Instead, it was a map, a direction that Michael had sketched out for her to follow so that she might carry on with his work. She saw that some of the symbols and codes seemed to correspond to certain persons and locations. She also noticed that some of the symbols seemed to be a code. So she started to organize them by drawing a map and drawing connections between the many pieces of evidence. Allison, in a short amount of time, was able to uncover a complex web of links that spanned the entire world. There were personal interactions, political dealings, and money transactions, all of them were connected together in a crooked web that was sophisticated and intricate. She had a feeling that she was onto something very significant. However, she was also aware that she was putting herself in harm's way. Whoever was responsible for Michael's death was probably still at large, and if they were aware of what she was planning, they would not hesitate to end it. Allison was well aware that she needed to proceed with caution. But she was also aware that she could not, under any circumstances, give up now that she was so close to discovering the truth. She took a few very slow, deep breaths before continuing her investigation with the resolute intention of unearthing the truth, no matter what the price might be. The cover-up is the topic of Chapter 5. Allison had made some substantial headway in her inquiry, but she had also drawn the attention of others, which was not what she had hoped for. As she dug deeper into Michael's research, she started to realize just how prominent the individuals she was investigating were, and how far they were genuinely prepared to go to keep their secrets hidden. As she dug deeper into Michael's research, she came to realize just how influential the people she was investigating were. She started getting texts that were threatening, and she observed that suspicious people were following her. Allison was well aware that she was putting herself in harm's way, yet she chose to push through her anxiety in order to learn the truth. When she was out doing interviews one day, she came upon something that gave her the chills all the way down her spine. One of the people she was chatting to let it slip that the World Economic Forum was involved in a big cover-up, seeking to hide Michael's death and silencing anyone who knew too much about it. This information was revealed by one of the individuals she was speaking to. Allison was well aware that she needed to move quickly. She started piecing together a sequence of events and tracing the travels of important people involved in the cover-up. 
She eventually came to the conclusion that the cover-up involved some of the most influential people in the world and went all the way to the top of the organization. However, as she continued her investigation, she uncovered something even more ominous. It wasn't simply about Michael's death that they were trying to hide, it was about something much more significant. Something that posed a threat to the fundamental structure of society. Allison was aware that she was in a situation that was too difficult for her. But she was also aware that she could not retreat from her position. She persisted in following the clues despite the fact that she was aware that each step she took might be her last. She came to the realization as she got closer to the reality that she was battling for more than just Michael's memory, she was fighting for the future of the world. She drew in a deep breath and prepared herself to face the most powerful people on the planet, regardless of the consequences her actions might have. The Danger, or Chapter 6, is here. Allison was aware that she had been getting dangerously close to the truth in recent times. The more she unearthed, the more perilous the circumstance grew. She was in the process of meeting with one of Michael's sources, who had assured her that they would provide her with important information. But when she arrived at the location where they were supposed to meet, she discovered that she was actually going to be talking to one of the participants in the World Economic Forum. The man was tall and well-dressed, giving the impression that he did not belong in the dark alleyway where they had arranged to meet. After he had introduced himself, he said his name was Charles, and as soon as he began, Allison could feel the animosity emanating from him. Charles cautioned her to end her investigation and told her that she was engaging in risky behavior by continuing her search. He warned her not to mess with or make light of the World Economic Forum under any circumstances, and he warned her that if she actually persisted down this road, she would come to deeply regret her decision. Allison's resolve did not waver, despite the fact that she was visibly scared. She assured Charles that she would not be cowed by his threats and that she would carry on with her inquiry up until the point where she had found out the truth. However, Charles wasn't through yet. He made a menacing threat while he was leaning in close to her, his hot breath pressing on her ear as he did so. He told her, You don't understand what you're dealing with, Miss Jones, and she agreed with him. You have no concept how much power we have in our possession. If you don't put an end to this investigation right now, you're putting more than just your life in jeopardy. Allison was aware that Charles was being very serious. She was able to make out in his eyes the icy, manipulative glare of a guy who was accustomed to getting what he desired. When she emerged from the back alley, she was shaken up and scared. She was aware that Charles was not the kind of man who would manufacture threats out of thin air, and that she was in a more precarious situation than she had ever been before. On the other hand, she was well aware that there was no way she could ever contemplate giving up. Not right now. She had already discovered too much and traveled too far. She drew in a long breath and steeled herself to face whatever was coming up next, regardless of the consequences. The Strategy, which is Chapter 7 Allison was aware that she was in a potentially dangerous circumstance. She had received threats, had her movements monitored, and was advised to desist from her research. However, she was unable to simply quit up at this point, she had come too far. It was necessary for her to devise a strategy. A method by which she could proceed with her investigation without placing herself in harm's way. Allison started to think about several strategies. She was aware of the World Economic Forum's power and influence, as well as the fact that she was incapable of taking them on by herself. She needed allies, people who could assist her in obtaining the information she needed without placing themselves in danger in the process. She started contacting other journalists, investigators, and activists who had experience going up against big groups and asking for their help. She went them the information that she had found up to that point, asked for their assistance in putting the puzzle together. Allison was also aware that she needed to exercise caution in the situation. Because she was afraid of being followed or having her whereabouts revealed, she was unable to meet in person with her allies. She did this by setting up encrypted messaging and anonymous email addresses as a means of exchanging information online, which she called her secure online channels of communication. Allison started formulating a plan as she collaborated with the people who were helping her. She came to the conclusion that making the World Economic Forum's secrets public was the most effective way to bring the organization to its knees. In order to accomplish this goal, she required concrete evidence, something that would dispel any lingering questions regarding their role in Michael's murder and the subsequent cover-up that took place. 
Allison was aware that these pieces of evidence existed somewhere in the world. It was just up to her to locate it. She started digging further, looking for clues, following leads, and putting the puzzle together one piece at a time as she went along. Allison was aware that time was running short, despite the fact that progress was painfully sluggish. But she was resolved to see this through despite the challenges it presented her with. She took a few slow, deep breaths and then concentrated her attention on the work at hand, fully aware that each action she took may determine whether or not she was successful. The Betrayal is the title of Chapter 8. Allison had the mistaken impression that she could rely on her closest co-worker, but she was wrong. During the course of her inquiry, she was interrupted by a phone call from a representative of the World Economic Forum WEF, at one point. Allison had heard the distinctive voice on the other end of the line before, but at first she was unable to identify the caller. After then, the person referred to her by name. Allison Jones, the voice referred to the person. We are aware of what you are planning to do. Allison felt an extra beat in her heart. She was aware of what this indicated, which was that her inquiry had been tainted. The members of the forum were aware of her intentions because they had been leaked by someone. How? How did you come to find that out? Allison inquired while making an effort to keep her tone level. It doesn't matter, was the response given by the person. What is important is that you put an end to your investigation as soon as possible. If you don't, you'll be sorry. Allison got off the phone and immediately began attempting to gather her thoughts. She was aware that at this point, she could not place her faith in anyone, not even her most trusted allies. She started going through everything she had discussed with her co-workers in an effort to identify the person or people who had betrayed her. And then it dawned on her that it was the one in whom she had the utmost confidence. Allison's stomach dropped when she realized that her most trusted co-worker was the one who had divulged the details of her research. She had feelings of rage, hurt, and betrayal. She was well aware that she need prompt action in order to shield both herself and the facts that she had discovered. Therefore, she came to the conclusion that the best course of action would be for her to conceal her true identity while also maintaining a low profile for the time being. Allison came to the realization that this was only the beginning as she was getting ready to go and packing her things. She was facing an arduous journey that would test her ability to think strategically, her tenacity, and her bravery. She needed all of these qualities to get through it successfully. On the other hand, she was prepared for it. She was aware that this was not the time to give up. Not when she was on the verge of revealing the hidden information. The escape is covered in Chapter 9. Allison was aware that she was in jeopardy and needed to take evasive action as soon as possible. She dialed the number of the only person she could put her faith in, Detective Thomas, and shared all that had taken place with him. Thomas paid close attention to what she had to say and strongly recommended that she leave the country as soon as she could. Allison was aware that he was correct and so, she decided to collect her belongings and head to the airport. Allison's heart was beating extremely fast as she waited in line to go through the security checkpoint. She continued to look across the throng in an effort to spot anyone who might be following her. But it looked like business as usual. Allison suddenly became aware of a voice coming from behind her just as she was about to go onto the airplane. Allison Jones, the voice referred to the person. Allison became ice cold. She gently turned around, dreading what she would see when she did so. It was a participant in the World Economic Forum and one of its members. He brandished a revolver and stated, you should have listened to us, as he spoke to them. The thoughts in Allison's head raced. She needed to move quickly. She pushed forward with full force and managed to knock the gun out of his hand, causing it to fall with a clang to the ground. Allison was completely oblivious to the fact that the other passengers began to scream and flee the scene. She hurriedly collected her belongings and started running towards the airplane while the man followed closely after her. Allison could hear the man yelling behind her as she entered the plane, and she turned around to face him. She drew a deep breath and slammed the door shut before turning around and locking it. Thomas was there to greet her as soon as she touched down, and he escorted her to a secure location so that she could remain hidden while they devised their next plan of action. Allison was acutely aware of the good fortune that had been bestowed upon her. She had no idea how she was going to make it through this ordeal, but she was certain that she needed to keep going. It was too late for her to give up now, she had traveled too far. The revelation is discussed in Chapter 10. 
When Allison answered the call from the unknown number, she was still in a state of shock from the attempt that had been made on her life. The individual revealed to her that they possessed material pertaining to Michael's inquiry as well as the World Economic Forum. After Allison gave her consent to meet the individual, they took her to a concealed place within the city. There, they explained to her the real purpose of the forum that was being held. They intended to use their great money and power to dominate governments and industries all over the world, and as part of this strategy, they planned to manipulate global markets for their own financial advantage. Allison was taken aback by this. Nevertheless, she came to the conclusion that Michael had made a significant discovery, one that the forum would do whatever in its power to conceal from the public. But she was aware that she needed to move quickly. So she and Thomas immediately started collecting evidence and working non-stop to construct a case against the other participants in the forum. They investigated potential leads, spoke with potential sources, and searched through piles of bank records. And little by little, they began to put together the proof that would allow them to bring the crooked organization to its knees. However, it was not a simple task. The members of the forum were influential people who had a wide, complex network of contacts, in addition, each of them had their own legal and investigative teams, which worked together to mask their tracks. Allison and Thomas knew they needed to exercise caution, but they were adamant about seeing justice served. Allison couldn't help but think about Michael while she and the others worked. He had passed away while attempting to expose this scheme, yet his passing would not have been in vain. That would be taken care of by her. In the end, after many months of labor, they were successful in amassing a sufficient amount of evidence to bring the members of the forum to trial. Allison remained seated in the courtroom as she saw the dishonest executives be carried out of the building in handcuffs. She experienced a sense of contentment as a result of the realization that justice had been done and that Michael's legacy would be carried on. However, she also had a sense of bereavement. Both her best friend and her lover had passed away, and she was painfully aware that her life would never be remotely the same again. The showdown is discussed in Chapter 11. Allison and Detective Thomas had amassed sufficient evidence to indict the individuals who were participating in the World Economic Forum. They had put in an incredible amount of effort, working around the clock to piece together the conspiracy that Michael had begun to uncover before he was murdered. They had no choice but to face the members of the forum and reveal their scheme to the rest of the world. They were aware that they were taking a risk with their lives because it was a hazardous mission. But Allison didn't give up easily. She was not going to let Michael's death go in vain, and she was not going to let the members of the forum carry on with their corrupt behavior without being stopped. They informed the participants of the forum that they needed to meet with them in order to discuss some fresh information, and they arranged the meeting themselves. Confident and haughty despite their lack of awareness of what was going to take place, the members of the forum showed up to the meeting. Allison and Thomas presented their findings and outlined the case against the executives who were corrupt. The participants of the forum attempted to refute the allegations, but the evidence was too compelling for them to be believed. After that, the situation escalated into violence. The members of the forum came to the conclusion that their scheme had been uncovered, and that this meant that their power was in jeopardy. They pulled out their weapons and trained them on Allison and Thomas before pulling the trigger. But Allison had everything she needed. She was prepared for the threat by bringing her own weapon with her as she had expected it. An exchange of gunfire broke out, and Allison and Thomas engaged in combat with the members of the forum. It was a bloody conflict, with gunshots flying and bodies dropping left and right. Allison and Thomas fought with everything they had, resolute in their goal to expose the corrupt executives and bring them to justice. Allison and Thomas became victorious in the end of the competition. They were successful in bringing down the members of the forum and revealing their scheme to the rest of the world. They put their own, much loved lives in jeopardy to complete the task because they knew it to be risky. Allison felt a sense of fulfillment as they made their way out of the building, bloodied and broken but still alive despite the ordeal. She had exacted revenge on those responsible for Michael's death and served justice to those who had attempted to stifle his voice. But she was also aware that there was never going to be an end to the amount of corruption and plots that needed to be uncovered. She would never give up standing up for what was morally correct, and she would never forget the things she had discovered thanks to Michael. Allison knew that the world may be a hazardous place, but she was prepared for anything that might occur. 
She had already demonstrated that she was a formidable opponent, and she was determined to keep fighting for what she believed to be the truth and justice despite the consequences. The aftermath is discussed in Chapter 12. Allison had completed the task. She had emerged victorious from the confrontation with the dishonest executives of the World Economic Forum, and had provided the world with evidence of their dishonesty. However, as she emerged from the fight battered and injured, she understood that the experience had irrevocably altered who she was as a person. Allison had been exhausted as a result of the perilous and violent nature of the investigation. Because she was terrified that someone might try to take her down once more, she found herself continually glancing over both of her shoulders. She had a hard time falling asleep at night because she was constantly thinking about the fight against the members of the forum and the death of Michael. Allison was dealing with the emotional fallout of the investigation, but she knew that she could not give up her quest for justice even as she struggled to cope with it. She proceeded to research and bring to light instances of corruption, making use of the skills and understanding that she had acquired through her previous work. Allison found more instances of corruption, more conspiracies, and more danger as she probed deeper into the matter. However, she also discovered hope. She came into contact with other people who were willing to fight for what was right and sacrifice all in order to make the world a better place. Allison persisted in her fight with the help of those around her as well as her own will. She brought to light crooked politicians, revealed corporate fraud and campaigned for the rights of the underprivileged and the oppressed, all of which are very much deserved. Allison was aware, throughout the entirety of the ordeal, that the confrontation in Davos had irrevocably altered her. She had experienced the worst that humanity had to offer and fought back against it with everything that she possessed. However, she had also witnessed the power that can be achieved by bravery, determination, and justice, and she vowed to never forget it. Allison never stopped fighting for what was right, despite the fact that she knew there would always be more wrongdoing and conflicts to uncover. However, she was also aware that she was far from being the only person going through the same battle that she was. She would continue to make a difference in the world, one conflict at a time, in collaboration with others who shared her dedication to truth and justice. Epilogue Following the events that took place in Davos, Alison Jones quickly became a well-known figure. Her expose of the World Economic Forum had shaken up the entire planet and brought to light the unethical behavior of some of the most powerful and important people on the face of the earth. Allison's work had gained her a number of prizes and accolades, but the thing that meant the most to her was the knowledge that she had been able to make a positive change in the world. After the corruption at the Forum came to light, a slew of reforms and new rules were enacted, all of which contributed to a substantially increased level of openness and accountability in the world of finance and business. However, Allison's win had not come without a price. She had to say goodbye to Michael, the guy she had grown to love, and as a result, the event had irrevocably altered her. She had experienced the downside of having power and wealth, and as a result, she had developed a profound sense of cynicism and mistrust as a result of her experiences. Allison never stopped fighting for justice and exposing corruption wherever she found it, despite the fact that she had her doubts. Her name became synonymous with journalism that was unafraid and unrelenting in its pursuit of the truth, and she was well respected for both of these qualities. Allison would never forget the events that transpired in Davos, but she was well aware that her contributions had been significant. She had demonstrated that even the most powerful people in the world could be held accountable for their actions, as well as the fact that the truth could never be totally hushed. Allison Jones had risen to the status of a folk hero, serving as a beacon of light and a source of motivation for those who dared to take on the evils of the world and fight for a better tomorrow. And it was because of this that she understood that Michael's sacrifice had not been in vain, 